Hey guys, Dave with First Place Auto Parts. Thanks for joining me in the studio today. You know, factory options are what makes a car unique. It can differentiate everything from a small block to a big block or a car that has power windows or it doesn't. Look, we used to take for granted nowadays that you can get things like heated and cooled seats. As a matter of fact, this is a factory seat heater right here for a late model vehicle. But man, we couldn't have imagined that stuff back in the 50s and 60s. In today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the, the craziest options that were available on vehicles. Like some of these things were popular. Some of them were just out of this world. You think George Jetson type stuff. And some of them, well, they were the sign of the times, things that were popular then that may or may not be popular now. But in today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the craziest options that were available. So the next time you see one of these in a car, you go, yep, I knew about that one. It was crazy back then. It's no Nuts now, and you know what? We're gonna talk about it today. And the first uh, way out there option was brought to us by none other than General Motors back in 1969. Look, it was called the V75 option. And what it was was literally liquid tire chains or tire chains in a bottle. If you lived in a northern climate, you knew that sometimes, especially with bias ply tires, tire chains were a necessity. GM, they came out with a liquid version of that. It was a one year only option. It was discontinued at the end of 1969. The V75 option or the liquid tire chain option essentially was a tire traction dispenser that was available on almost the full Chevrolet lineup for 1969. The driver would activate a control on the dash that would turn on two aerosol canisters over the rear wheels, and these canisters contain a polymer that was designed to make the tread grip cold, slippery surfaces. Most of the V75 option cars were Chevrolet full-size vehicle. However, it's estimated that roughly 188 1969 Camaros had the liquid tire chains as a factory option installed. And for the discerning businessman who wouldn't be caught dead with a five o'clock shadow on his face at eight o'clock in the morning, GM offered 1951 through 1959 electric shavers as a dealer installed option on his cars. The electric shavers were made by a few different manufacturers and offered through the GM accessory catalog. Remington, Shake, and Norelco were some of the manufacturers and the electric shaver had a 12 volt cigarette lighter plug for use when on the road. And DeSoto, in all their wisdom in 1942, had an option that was probably not be very politically correct today, but back in the 40s it made perfect sense and it was a cigarette dispensing system that was in the middle of the center of the steering wheel. Essentially what this thing did is it had a spring-loaded cap that would hold a full pack of cigarettes. As the driver was motoring along and wanted a fresh cigarette, all they had to do was pop the lid, pull a new cig out, hit the cigarette lighter and they were on their way. Way to go DeSoto, keeping America healthy and safe all at the same time. And I don't know about you guys, but so much about driving in my cars has to do with music. I love to listen to music and people back in the 50s liked their music too. It was just a little bit harder to come by and what Chrysler did from 1956 to 1959 is they offered a hi-fi stereo system that went in the cars. Now hi-fi that stands for high fidelity and it was essentially a record player that was mounted in the vehicle. Now up until 1956 you had to buy Chrysler specific records and then after 56 starting in 57 you could play any number of a number of 45 records that were available all the way up until 1959. Look, nothing like quite like cruising and having your arm skip on your record. So the arm on the actual Chrysler installed hi-fi system had a spring-loaded arm that helped keep it in contact with the record. Now, if you live in Michigan or Ohio where the potholes are huge, the size of small Volkswagens, that spring would have to be pretty taut. But all the way back in the 50s, you could have your music and take it with you and have it be portable and mobile and you could listen to exactly the song or the album that you wanted to. And how many times when you you're driving your car today, do you wish that maybe you had leather seats for one occasion and cloth seats for the other? One durable and one supple and soft. Well, you could get that with the Packard back in the day with their Caribbean reversible seats. What it was was one side was quilted leather and the other side had a fabric that had a pattern fabric attached to it. All the driver or the owner had to do was flip the seat cushion over and reverse it to get the desired option, man. That'd be so cool today. Maybe you've got your dog in there and you want to put them on the cloth seat seat, but you got your lady next to you and for that late night dinner cruise and you want the leather seat. But just think of the possibilities. Well, Packer did back in the day and they had the Caribbean reversible seat cushions. And if that wasn't enough, back in 57 and 58, Cadillac, man, back when caddies were just the epitome of cool, you could get the Eldorado Brome glove box door bar.
car kit and you had everything you needed for a night out on the town with your significant other. The Cadillac's glove box bar, which was located in the glove box, included the magnetized shot glasses because they stuck themselves to the inside of the glove box door. Nobody wants to spill their shots when driving. A cigarette case, a ladies compact case that included a comb, lipstick, another cigarette case, a vanity mirror, and a nickel for the payphone if you needed to call home. Look, this bar kit had included everything out for a good time on a Saturday night with your significant other. Man, why couldn't we have something like that today? Oh wait, we don't even have glove boxes today. That's why. But back then you could have your car, your glove box, and your bar in your glove box. It was super cool. And you know, we take our sliding back windows in the back of our pickup trucks today for granted. I love those things. You get a great breeze. But back in 1963, all the way through 68, Mercury offered what they called the breezeway rear window. And the breezeway rear window was pretty cool. Look, the whole back window would go down and it would allow cool fresh air. That whole 255 thing, well it became three windows at 55 miles an hour and you could get an outdoor feeling. Look, this thing even had a little lip over the back window so that when it rained, the rain was less likely to get inside the vehicle and you could drive around with the window down. Look, the breezeway window was kind of cool and it was certainly the forebear of the sliding back window of our modern pickup trucks. Factory options, they've changed a lot over the years and they're really kind of a sign of the time. Of all the ones we mentioned, absolutely none of those things are available today, which tells you something about how trendy at times options can be. They can make it a difference between a grocery gutter to a, basically a hotel on wheels, but the reality is you end up paying for them when you add them to the vehicle. And if, speaking of vehicles, if you ever need parts to restore or make your American Muscle car or your truck go faster, stop harder or put it back to its former glory, please check us out at First Place Auto Parts at fpautoparts.com. Guys, we have everything you need there to get your car back on the road or make it exactly the way you want it. Guys, I appreciate you watching this video and if you have any other options that you have found to be really cool that we didn't mention, please let us know in the message part of this thing and tell us about it. We'd love to hear from you. And until next time, let's keep the hammer down, but keep it between the guardrails.